Bem que é pessoal, bem-vindos novamente ao Underground Voice ao vivo. Hoje tenho o prazer de receber aqui o Tom, vocalista dos Evergrey. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's a huge honor to meet you and to receive you there at Underground's Voice. Uh, so, uh, the new album Escape of the Phoenix was released in February and it's having an awesome feedback everywhere uh, and also great positions on charts. So it's being successful, right? Um, is it's is that great to see uh, that after so much work you had uh, writing this record, especially this one, that you had more time to work in all the details? Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, we work uh, in the exact same way for each and every album we make. Uh, it, it's really no difference. The only difference for us this time was that we didn't have to fly to other countries in, in, in the midst of recording. So for us, it was... So, if anything, this is the positive side from the pandemic for us that we got to only concentrate on the music. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we this album has been kind to us in many ways, and uh, of course, we're super happy that people are uh, are um, appreciating the work that we put in. Yeah, it's it's the first album released after the trilogy. And I think it can be a turning point in your career, even if lyric-wise can be similar, but with a, a different approach this time. I think that Escape of the Phoenix is, is so complete that in the future we will be able to talk about Evergrey before and after this album. Uh, do you agree with that? I, uh, I, I mean, I, I really hope you're right. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, for me, as I said, we. I didn't approach this album in, in any different way than I did for the last 26 years. So for me, I'm just writing music in the same way. And uh, for this album, it sounds like this. Uh, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, the, the only mission I have for each and every album is that we make as good uh, songs as possible. That That's it, you know. And, uh, and I don't know what struck this time with people, but one thing that I have sort of analyzed is when I've been singing about, I'm pretty much singing about the same topics that I've been doing for the whole of my music career. I'm singing about solitude and the essence of feeling like an outsider and, uh, you know, loneliness and not being like somebody else and uh, not fitting in. And before maybe I've done it in a, in, a, in a perspective of sadness and sorrow or uh, where you have really felt lonely. Uh, and I think now, on the escape for uh, of the phoenix i write from a perspective of strength and self-confidence and uh, and i guess that makes the album sound to people's ears uh, a bit more energetic uh, and uplifting even if you will you know? and, and one of the best things about this album besides that you you were saying right now is the great work on the guitars it's, it's a different tone comparing to the previous albums, right? Was this intentional? No. <laughs> no, no. I mean, again, I mean, we, we don't do we don't do things in, in. I mean, sometimes we can say that, yeah, let's let's try to make a good uh, guitar driven uh, song that will fit live. But but uh, the only difference that we did this time that was intentional was that we added a new tuning. So we have a seven string dropped that we usually drop to A, we have a drop to G now. So that, that's the difference. And, and I think that also impacts the album's sound in a way, being more heavy and gritty in that sense. But uh, yeah, that's the only intention we had. But I mean, we work on, we, I mean, guitarist is, guitar is my instrument also very much even before vocals even. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, how was possible to have um, James Labrie as a guest uh, on this album? I mean, the short story is that I just wrote him an email telling him, "Hey, James, we need to have you on this song," and uh, and he said, uh, "Would love to do it." And uh, but the long story is that we were sitting in our uh, studio listening to to this song before before I started writing vocals to it, and this part came up, uh, and I, and I guess all of us. This part reminded uh, all of us of James Labrie for some for some reason. Maybe it's it was the harmonies or, or or the chord progression, whatever. Because everybody said, I said we should have a guest vocalist, and we started thinking about who we could 
ask. And then everybody was like, oh, we need, we need to call James. And uh, yeah, and he was gracious enough to do it. And uh, I think he did an awesome job. And for me, it's just a fantastic honor to have him on, on, on the music that we have written. It's, uh, it's one of those great things. It's a great guest. It's a great song. And it's a great album also. So um, some albums are only understandable uh, if you listen to it as a whole. Uh, and other albums are also understandable just listening uh, isolated songs. Uh, but this album has, has songs so representative that it can be understood in both ways, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think uh, because even on this album, it's on the prior albums, it has always been extremely important for us to present the album in the right order, song first and whatever. Uh, I mean, purely artistically. And for this album, when the, the record label asked us what, what songs we should have for, for videos, we didn't care. We said to them that they could choose because for us it didn't matter. And uh, yeah, so I guess that says something about it, each and every song. We could have made, a, we could have made a, two other videos, I think. Even though I think they made a great choice for, for the videos that they, they decided on. And besides compilations, singles, live albums, uh, Evergrey have already released 12 albums in 25 years. It's a lot of music, so is that easy to write new songs that uh, that still up to the classics and have enough creativity to to not release uh, more of the same? I mean, that's the that's the challenge each and every time. The challenge is to when I've written one song for this album, I have to write another song that is better than the first one, and then you can bring that back to watch the albums as well. So, uh, and the good thing about being a small band as Evergrey is that we're still growing, you know. So, so for us, it's this is our this is already our most commercial success <laughs> and it's not been out a month yet. Yeah. So, so for, uh, for us, it's, um, that's also rewarding in a sense, but that's not why we write music. We write music because we want to, we want to write the best songs possible to our ears. It doesn't matter at first what somebody else would think. We can't think about that, you know? So, and that's the key for us trying to find uh, new ways to record an album, be it if we change the mixer guy or if we change the studio or if we change an approach uh, by recording somewhere else or, you know, in a new tuning or uh, a, a trilogy of uh, a storyline or whatever. We have to come up with something that, that makes it fresh for ourselves. And for this album, it was uh, not doing uh, a storyline that belonged to the trilogy, you know, so, yeah. Uh, you already said a few times that the pandemic didn't affect uh, the recording process of this album, but did it affect any plan you, you possibly had to celebrate the 25 years of career of the band? <laughs> no, you're actually not the first guy who said that because we didn't even we weren't even aware that it was 25 years so you know it's like uh, no it didn't affect anything like that uh, and it didn't affect anything except that we got like 10 to 12 shows cancelled that's it uh, and now we have had to move our European tour three times but uh, yeah so I think the big change is going to come now if we, if we don't get to tour for this you know, in connection with the album, of course, right now it's impossible, but we have a tour book for October, November. And uh, if that doesn't happen, yeah, that's when we will feel and see the change the most, I guess. Yeah, we hope that, that it can happen. So, uh, yes. Everybody knows Sweden for having a huge dead metal bands and also for being a dead metal country. So does a band like Evergrey still have full support in Sweden or do you feel, uh, do you feel that support more internationally? I mean, the thing is, I mean, in Sweden, we also have Europe and uh, King Diamond and uh, parts from Motorhead and, uh, you know, The Haunted and Hammerfall. And, you know, it's like, it's not like we only have In Flames, uh, Dark Tranquility, Opeth and, and the rest of them. And Entombed, of course, we have to mention now. Uh, so... No, I mean, I think we have, uh, I think we have a very, we have a, we have our position in Sweden. I would say we don't play huge arenas, of course, but we play, you know, eight hundred to one thousand people, something in, in in between five hundred to a thousand people. I would say in Sweden, so it's a, uh, it's a decent level. Uh, it's not the big arenas, but it's good enough for us. Anyway, the band is growing, so maybe it's possible to, to play in bigger arenas or festivals in the future. Yeah, 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 we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, 
And finally, thank you so much for being here. It was a, a great honor to, to meet you and talk to you a little bit. So any last words for the Portuguese fans and Underground's Voice viewers? Yeah, I think it's about time that we come back to Port, Port, Portugal again. I think the last time we played was Vagos Open Air, and that was a long time ago. So it's, it's about that time. So tell your promoters to, to wish for Evergrey, and we will gladly come to your beautiful country. Yeah. We hope so. And once again, thank you, and, and please stay safe. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. Bye-bye. All right.